Well, welcome back. This is Sue Harper. Uh, we're still working on Dreams of Camelot, and we've run into a real problem, a big problem, a huge problem. Um, I got the whole painting done, and it wasn't till I got into the border and started adding layers of color that I realized there was a flaw in the paper. I've run into this with arches recently. I don't know why. I know a lot of people are having troubles, and one of the things that's really obnoxious about it is it doesn't show up until you try to put paint on it. So since I hadn't done anything with the border, I didn't know it was there. So what do you do? Scrap the whole thing? I can't leave this big, white, funny mark here. So what I did was try to scrub some of it out. It, it didn't work. So then I let it dry and sandpapered it. Finally, I had to decide that there wasn't much for it, except that I was going to have to put something in that spot that wasn't part of this border. So what I did was I drew up a funny little lizard crawling up the side of that frame. Okay. And so, um, we're going to put him in, but before I do that, this is really a good lesson on how to correct a major mistake when it's too late to do anything else. So I've got here some Daniel Smith watercolor ground. Now this stuff can get really thick and pasty like that. You can't even pour it. Okay. <clears throat> It has a tendency to add texture, which you can get rid of with a little sandpaper. What I've done is water it way down um, to very watery um, consistency. Um, what you can do with this stuff, it's, it's kind of fun, is you put it on the, the watercolor paper. And when it's dry, if you do it too soon, It'll just act like an opaque paint, but it is kind of an acrylic. So if you let it cure overnight, let it dry for 24 hours, um, you can paint on it like watercolor paper. It will take the paint and it won't dissolve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask out, because if I put color in it now, it's still going to be an uneven color. Um, so I'm going to put this watercolor ground very lightly on this guy. I'm going to try and not go over the um, pencil lines because I want to be able to see what I'm doing and I don't want to have to retrace it all over again. So I'm going to put uh, some of this on here. And then when I finish it putting it on, I will dry it. And I'll put another coat on it. And when I have a sufficient amount of watercolor ground to cover up, another thing is I put this uh, line, this ink line, it's, it's waterproof ink. I can't get it off. <laughs> so I have to go around it. So this is what we're doing. I don't know about this painting. It's almost been more trouble than it's worth. I suppose if I tried to sell this painting for the amount of time that I put into it, I would be getting paid minimum wage for 1932. Uh, cover up that line. Well, that worked pretty well. Putting it in layers like this will help to fill in some of the damage that I did to the paper trying to correct that the traditional way by scrubbing it out. 
That was a lesson in futility. Okay, we'll dry that off. I'll make several layers of that, leave it overnight, and we'll see what we can do with it. This part here is still a little funny, but since this is going to be casting shadows, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Same with this here. We'll just have to make do with, with what we've got. But at least I think that will help not make such an obvious flaw in the paper. Um, I found other ones, one up here and one over here, but they're not nearly so um, noticeable and I was able to cover them up uh, much easier. So um, there's your lesson on, on correcting really bad problems and we'll see how successful that ends up. Until next time, bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe.